Hi guys, this should be a quick video um, just explaining a couple of basic Photoshop techniques that are helpful for making Photoshop templates, uh, in particular strip templates. So I'm starting with a, um, a blank document here. It's 1800 by 1200 and we're getting ready to make a strip. First thing I want to point out is is um, to turn on your rulers. You want to come up to the view menu and under here, where, right here where it says rulers, click on that. Or you can do control R or command R if you're on a Mac. Okay, I didn't need them in this document. I need them over here. So I'm going to command R. You may notice that I've got them set to pixels, which is my preferred working working format. But if, you, if yours comes up set as inches or some other measurement, all you have to do is right click on the ruler itself and you get all your different choices. Um, you know, it might come up as inches, which might make you more comfortable. But if you want to be exact with things, especially when it comes to uh, putting these guides down, the uh, pixels are a lot more useful to me. So the first thing you want to do after you get your rulers, now you can drag out some guides to help you line up everything. First one you want to line up is right there at the center, the 600. And and I'm going to hold down the shift key, which makes it pop to the measurements that are showing. So it's going to pop right to that 600 and stay right there. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and scroll all the way to the top. As long as we're building guides here, we might as well get enough guides to cover all the different parts of the graphic. Uh, to help you do your work uh, easier and more evenly. First thing I want to do is get the um, the outer bleed area. That's the part that's going to expand out past your paper um, so that you don't get white lines around it. You need to have that incorporated into your graphic so that you don't have objects in your design getting cut off. With mine I like to go 30 pixels roughly, 25 maybe 30 from every edge. Some people may think that's a lot, um, but I, I never have any trouble with anything getting cut off, so that makes me happy. I'm zoomed in a lot, a lot more than I need to be here. Let me pull out some. That'll work. So I just pulled out that first one on the top. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. Looks like I lost the bottom of my image. There we go. I'll pull that one down. I'm zoomed out to a point where where every tick is five pixels. So there's 10, 20, 30 right there. Hold down my shift key to snap. And now I can um, uh, let me get this a little bit smaller so I can get to the scrolls here. There we go. I'm just gonna, just gonna do exactly the same on the left and the right. 30 from the left. And on the right, it'll be 1170. And command zero to zoom back out full. Another thing you might want to do, um, I usually do this too. Now, I, I have a set of templates made up that are already tailored to my printers and the way they work. So um, I don't remember the actual numbers that I ended up using on mine. But I'm going to zoom in here and make a little bit of gutter space between the two halves also. Let's say uh, 15 pixels, maybe. So that's 10. Let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Now I can get, get that. And you can move these lines again after you've made them. You just have to make sure you have the... Uh, arrow tool, the selection tool, set up to work for that. And then once again, I'm going to come out 15 from the center. So now I've got the same amount of gutter as I do bleed on the outside edges. So there's the rulers and guides. It's nice. It gets you ready to, ready to work and you know where you can be and where you can't be. And it also helps you 
with uh, snapping, which is another option. If you come up to view, you can turn on snapping, and then you can tell it what you want to snap it to or not snap to. I actually, looks like I have everything. Um, the reason these are grayed out is because I don't have grid or slices set up for viewing. I'm not looking at those. I don't particularly use them. Now the next thing we're going to want to go onto smart objects. The great thing about smart objects is, is that you can make copies of them and then when you edit those copies that edit is reflected in every copy. So first thing I'm going to make, let's go down here to the rectangle tool. Let's draw out some arbitrary um, arbitrary photo boxes here and and I'll actually demonstrate one of the techniques I'll jump ahead to the alt drag one of the nice things one of the, one of the great tools is if you have the selection tool active which is the the arrow with the crossed arrows and you hold down the alt key you see that changes to double arrow, black and white arrow. Now you can drag and you're making a copy. So I'm still holding Alt, but I let go of the mouse. So now I'm going to drag another copy of this second layer. I'm trying to be a little even here, but not, not making a big deal out of it. First thing you can do, you can... Uh, select all three of those layers in the layers palette and if you right click on any one of them and choose convert to smart object that'll group those layers now you can once again alt drag if you hold shift that'll constrain it to left and right and now I've got my placeholders for my my photos so I can build the rest of the graphic around those. Now you see I've already started with the smart objects. It's real easy to make them. You select one layer or multiple layers, right click, choose create smart object, and then you can you can move that around as a group. You can make copies of it. There's really not much to um, show you as far as making a copy or making changes to this although I could possibly add a stroke to something. You notice um, I double clicked on it in the layer palette and it says you have to choose file save to commit the changes then on returning to this document you'll see those. So we'll hit OK and that brings up this this group which um, you see that it's cropped to the actual area if I wanted to change the spacing of those, I would have more work to do. I'd have to change the the canvas size for this smart object, but I, I'm not really worried about that right now. One thing I can do is um, we can double click on it towards the right here to bring up blending options. And I can do all sorts of things like adding a stroke um, this is, stroke is outside so we can't see it put it on the inside so you know I've just framed that one in black can do a bevel and emboss all the all the cheesiest stuff that you can think of you can just just add it all but I'm hit okay there you see I only did it to one but I'm gonna command s to save just gonna go ahead and close that layer now you see both sides have been have been changed so they're they're exactly the same now the next the next step we can um, come down here I'm gonna grab the text tool and once again I'm gonna make several layers and group them together into a smart object that I can then copy and then modify to my heart's content to reflect in the the object on the other side with no problems at all. So let's uh, wish somebody a happy birthday.
I'm in a happy birthday mode since that's what my last event was. I'll just use her name too. So there we go. I had a happy birthday party for Sarah. I'm going to make her name bigger. Let's uh let's play with this happy birthday here and uh do something do something fun. Let's see. Maybe distort. And I can't remember whether I did that in Photoshop or Illustrator. I think maybe I have to do smart filters. Now what that warning it just gave me it says it's turning happy birthday into a smart object. So I've already got a smart object. You can do smart object inside a smart object inside a smart object to your heart's content. It just makes editing individual individual items a little more difficult because you have to keep stepping into your smart objects. The warp filters under transform. Oh, and that's not even the warp filter that I wanted. Okay. But anyway, let's do some weird stuff with that. Nothing like what I was planning to do. But anyway, we can take that layer and also select Sarah. And we do convert object to smart object. And we're going to come in here and alt drag that over to the other side. Hold shift to constrain it. Now they're both in exactly the same place on both on both sides but I can click on either one of these. I can click on Sarah or Sarah Copy just to prove it. I'm actually editing this one. Same warning as before. Um, come into this. Let's just make those a different color. Let's make it something horrible, horribly green. Now you see we got a big change here. I'm gonna close out of that. Well, it should have asked me to save, but it just gave me a warning. So I'll save that, close it. Now you see that change is reflected in this layer, but I'll have to save that. And now you see it's here. So, there it is. Quick and easy. Rulers and guides. Smart objects. Alt drag to copy. Now, um, have fun with it. And try to forget just how ugly this design was. I know I'm going to try. <laughs>